Well, let's take a closer look at that uncertain year ahead for Mexico. Earlier, I spoke to Manuel Suarez Maya. He's the former chief of staff of the governor of the Bank of Mexico and a Latin America economic consultant. You are going from an assumption to a conclusion. Uh, you are assuming that Congress will, the U.S. Congress will pass uh, the new treaty, but it, they are going to the Democrats now in control of the House <coughs> will be demanding all sorts of new conditions, uh, particularly in the labor uh, sector of the treaty, which are going to be very difficult to agree with. Uh, that's number one issue. Number two, uh, the new government uh, has produced a budget which is full of giveaways to people and very little incentive for job creation uh, for growth and for investment. So, uh, <clears throat> and typically in Mexico in the last uh, six administrations, there's a substantial drop in the growth in the first year of an administration because they simply don't know how to spend. Uh, in this case, it's going to be worse because um, they, they are firing lots of uh, bureaucrats. Uh, they plan to get rid of uh, between 250 and 350,000 bureaucrats, which they don't like. And uh, they all <coughs> will remain only with uh, uh, unionized workers in the ministries. And that's the thinking part of all the bureaucracy. So right. it's going to be like shooting yourself on the foot. Given this uncertainty that you're talking about, how will that impact growth in the Mexican economy? Well. The best estimates is that growth will go down from 2.5% this year to 1.5%, 1.8% next year. Uh, <clears throat> and that's, in my opinion, uh, too good an, an estimate. I think it's going to be lower. Because the IMF came out with some figures, some projections for Mexico's economy. They had Mexico's economy reaching 2.3% for this year, 2018, mm -hmm. and growing to 2.7% next year. They have to revise that down. <laughs> and I know there's a mission, uh, IMF mission in Mexico as we speak. And uh, I know from a former official, at the IMF, very close to uh, the Mexico case, that uh, they are in, in discussions about uh, what's going on. And uh, certainly they will uh, revise downwards their estimates. There is another factor, and of course that is world trade. If we look at WTO projections for next year, they expect world trade to contract yep. as well. Um, they expect growth to be down to 3.7 percent. That was a downward uh, projection. How will that impact a country like Mexico? Very much, because we are far more dependent on trade than the U.S. Uh, we are one of the most open economies in, in the world. And therefore, any, any downward trend uh, affects Mexico very much. Uh, it's very sensitive to that, particularly if the downward trend comes from our main trading uh, partner, which is the U.S. Mm -hmm. Mexico exports around 80 percent of uh, all its sales abroad to the U.S., while imports about 65 percent from the U.S. All right, let's look at Mexico's trade relationship with China, currently valued at around $80 billion. Do you see that expanding after the USMCA if, of course, it is ratified by all three legislatures, or do you see it tightening? Well, I, th I think it, it's going to expand, and particularly Mexican exports to China, because we have a huge trade deficit with China. And I don't think trade deficits are bad. Don't, don't confuse me with those guys who think that, that nonsense. Uh, Trade deficits are what they are for a variety of reasons. But I think that <coughs> Mexican exports will um, start growing much faster vis-a-vis -vis China. And Chinese investment is going to uh, really kick in, unlike uh, the, the rest of Latin America, where it was very strong in the past and has been waning down, uh, particularly in countries that are hopelessly um, doomed like Venezuela. So th there's going to be much larger investment, Chinese investment in Mexico, in infrastructure and that sort of thing. And this, is, this has been repeated by the new administration. They're very interested in improving <coughs> the relationship with China. 
And there is the collateral effect also of uh, the war of Mr. Trump against China in commercial terms that might induce some of the corporations that had moved to China to come back to Mexico. What are the prospects for a bilateral trade deal between China and Mexico? I think they're very good. I think we, we, we should be able to have a comprehensive uh, treaty in perhaps a couple of years. Now, there is one, one problem there. <clears throat> Uh, the new administration has fired all the experts. The, the trade team that has negotiated 45 uh, free trade agreements in the past, these are among the most qualified teams of negotiators in the world. And they are left without anyone except for the new Undersecretary of Foreign Relations for North America, who uh, spent 10 years in China teaching. Uh, but that's about it. And he's going to have, have his hands full dealing with North America, which is his job. So it's, I don't see who's going to negotiate uh, the trade agreement. Uh, on the Mexican side, the Chinese are very professional. And they, they have very good people to do it.